This video gives an overview of cell-derived mediators of inflammation. There are two phases of inflammation. There's the vascular phase and then the cellular phase. In the vascular phase of inflammation, there is vasodilation and increased capillary permeability. This increases blood flow to the site of injury and allows movement of fluid and proteins into the tissue. These processes in the vascular phase lead to the cardinal signs of inflammation, redness and warmth due to vasodilation and swelling and pain due to vascular permeability. Some of the mediators involved in the vascular phase of inflammation are histamine, serotonin, cytokines, prostaglandins, leukotrienes, and nitric oxide. There are four steps in the cellular phase of inflammation. During adhesion and margination, the white blood cells roll along the wall of the blood vessel and adhere to the endothelial cells. The cell then squeezes through the blood vessel wall during the process of transmigration and then finds its way to the site of injury in the process of chemotaxis. Finally, the white blood cell reaches the site of injury where it is activated, leading to phagocytosis. Some of the mediators in the cellular phase of inflammation are cytokines, chemokines, platelet activating factor, serotonin, reactive oxygen species, nitric oxide, and leukotrienes. Our first mediator is histamine. Histamine is among the first mediators in acute inflammation. Histamine is stored as a preformed molecule and released by mast cells and basophils. Release of histamine causes vasodilation and increased vascular permeability. We usually think of serotonin as a hormone that works in the brain to regulate mood, happiness, and anxiety, among other things. But during inflammation, serotonin is released by platelets, leading to vasodilation and increased cytokine production. Platelet activating factor is produced by leukocytes. Platelet activating factor triggers the release of serotonin from platelets. It also functions to activate neutrophils and induce prostaglandin synthesis. In addition, platelet activating factor functions as a chemoattractant, guiding white blood cells to the site of injury. Cytokines are the primary messengers of the immune system. Cytokines can function in an autocrine, paracrine, or endocrine manner. Cytokines are secreted by leukocytes, endothelial cells, and other types of cells. Cytokines mediate local and systemic immune responses. Cytokines are pleiotropic, meaning one cytokine can have multiple effects, and redundant, as multiple cytokines can have the same or overlapping effects. Chemokines are critical to the third step in the cellular phase of inflammation. Chemokines are produced by leukocytes. Chemokines recruit and direct the migration of immune cells to the site of tissue injury by generating a chemical gradient trail. Chemokines work a bit like a breadcrumb trail that helps you find your way if you were to get lost. Leukotrienes are an end product of arachidonic acid metabolism. Activation of the lipoxygenase pathway leads to the production of a number of leukotrienes that have different effects during inflammation. Effects of these lipoxygenase pathway products include increased capillary permeability, 
increased adhesion properties of endothelial cells, increased extravasation of leukocytes, increased chemotaxis, and bronchoconstriction. Prostaglandins are another end product of arachidonic acid metabolism. Prostaglandins come from the cyclooxygenase pathway. Activation of the cyclooxygenase pathway results in multiple prostaglandins with different and sometimes opposite effects. For example, prostaglandins can promote vasodilation or vasoconstriction, bronchoconstriction or bronchodilation. Prostaglandins increase vascular permeability. They can also cause pain and fever associated with inflammation. Reactive oxygen species are highly reactive chemicals formed from oxygen. Reactive oxygen species are produced by leukocytes during inflammation. Reactive oxygen species in inflammation include hydrogen peroxide and hydroxyl radicals. Reactive oxygen species increase cytokine production and amplify inflammation. Nitric oxide is a colorless gas with the formula NO. It has an unpaired electron and thus is a free radical. Nitric oxide is produced by leukocytes in inflammation. Release of nitric oxide leads to vasodilation. Nitric oxide also has antimicrobial actions and functions to facilitate leukocyte recruitment. There are also some anti-inflammatory mediators of inflammation. We just discussed how nitric oxide can promote inflammation, but it also has some anti-inflammatory properties. Nitric oxide reduces the cellular phase of inflammation and has important antiplatelet functions. And finally, we have our PUFAs. These are omega-3 polyunsaturated fatty acids that can only be obtained through diet. These healthy lipids replace arachidonic acid in cell membranes, thereby reducing the substrate for production of leukotrienes and prostaglandins. So be sure to take in plenty of healthy fats through foods such as fatty fish, flaxseed, canola oil, green leafy vegetables, walnuts, or soybeans.